Welcome to Questions and Answers from Quarantine with Pastor Chris McMichael. Hello there. Welcome to another episode of Questions and Answers from Quarantine. I'm Chris McMichael from Tennessee. We're on episode 29. I've got a very fascinating question uh, coming to us from another country. This is one of those questions that there may be no right or wrong answer, only conjecture and speculation. It's not necessarily doctrinal, but it's worth looking at. I was very pleased to see the question because it was a bit of a challenge for me. And let me pull it up for you here. Uh, it says this, Hello, Pastor Chris. In Genesis 9.22, Ham glanced at his father's nakedness, but it was Ham's son, Canaan, that was cursed by Noah. Not Ham himself or his other three sons, Cush, uh, Mezraim and Foot, but only Canaan. Can you please explain why? Blessings to you and your family ministry, uh, etc. So that is a wonderful question, and honestly, this is one I had to go research because I've I've never really questioned it as far as why why would God or excuse me Noah why would Noah a prophet why would he curse Canaan when Ham was the one that looked at him and saw his nakedness? To, to review, let's just look at this story real quick. Genesis chapter nine. Verse 18, this is after the flood, after they've come off the ark. And obviously, we have uh, some time has passed because now um, Noah's three sons, Sham, Ham, and Japheth, have had children. And we know they have a lot of children. If Canaan is the one being cursed in this story, Canaan is the youngest of four children. So we've got a lot of kids. So this may be decades past the ark and the flood. So in verse 18, and the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Ham is the father of Canaan. Now just keep that in mind because Canaan moves west and establishes Canaan land, which becomes the promised land, which becomes Israel. All right? So the son, the youngest son of Ham, the middle son of Noah, when he separates and moves throughout the world like all these sons did, uh, they move throughout Cush, like son, Cush becomes the father of the Ethiopians, the Cushites. Those are very dark-skinned people. <clears throat> um, in fact, they're called Ethiopians in the Old Testament. Remember, Moses married a Cushite or an Ethiopian, and his brother and sister had a real problem with Moses marrying a Cushite. H Ham's youngest son, Canaan, he settles in territory that becomes Canaan land, which is where Abraham moves to hundreds of years later. And walks up and down in it. And one of the reasons that that land can be given to Abraham's descendants and become modern day Israel is because Noah cursed Canaan before he ever settled in Canaan land and it forfeited all of his rights in the earth. Which is, I think is pretty cool to think about the power of the curse declared by the, the prophet Noah. We don't think of Noah as a prophet, but when you declare a thing and it comes to pass, thousands of years later still, you're a prophet. <laughs> These are the three sons of Noah, and over them was the whole earth, excuse me, and of them was the whole earth overspread. They settled in every direction. And Noah began to be a husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. A husbandman means a farmer. He planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. Uh, let me point this out. <clears throat> we, we don't realize that Noah built an ark, and that's what he's known for. But he had a lot of life left over after that, and, it, and becoming a drunk and becoming a, a vintner, that is a wine guy, uh, probably wasn't his best day. <clears throat> he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. So apparently he was fall down naked drunk. It's just not a good way to be. You don't want to be fall down naked drunk ever, much less as a prophet having the biggest zoo in history. <laughs> And as a floating zoo to beat all that. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren outside. And Shem and Japheth took a garment, they laid it upon both their shoulders, and they went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan. Here's the curse. Now, here's the imprecation that lasts even to this day today. Timeline says this is 4,000 years ago. 
Canaan hasn't even left the family yet to go settle in Canaan land. But because of this curse, Israel is Israel today. A servant of servants shall Canaan be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. So Canaan gets to serve everybody. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years, and all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. And so if you drop down to, let's see, where is it here? In chapter 4, there you go, in verse 6. And the sons, excuse me, chapter 10, verse 6. And the sons of Ham, Cush, Mezraim, and Phut, and Canaan. So the question is, if it was Ham that saw Noah naked, why does Noah sit up, as verse 24 says, know what his younger son had done unto him, and says, cursed be Canaan. Now, I did some research on this. There's a couple of explanations. None of them really ring true. The best one I found is this. We have to read between the lines, and anything I say from this point forward is just pure conjecture and speculation, but we're trying to find an answer. Obviously, God honors the, the curse or the imprecation because Canaan land doesn't exist anymore. It is not uncommon in Hebrew speech to call your grandsons your son and to call your granddaughters your daughter or even your daughter-in-laws your daughter. That's just kind of how the, the, the family structure worked. So it, it would not be unreasonable for us to interpret verse 24 as, And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his youngest grandson had done unto him. Because Canaan is the youngest grandson. Canaan is the youngest son of Ham. And it could be quite possible um, that he's the youngest grandson. Plus, if you look at who Ham is in the genealogy, Ham is not the younger son. Ham is the middle son. So it does not say in verse 24, And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what Ham had done unto him. It says he woke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And the best explanation I can find is that that reference to younger son would be Canaan or younger grandson. But that, from there we have to conject even further that maybe Ham, before he went and told his brothers, also told his youngest son. And perhaps, again, we're having to conject because there's nothing in the scriptures here, that perhaps Ham, excuse me, Canaan came in and did something to his grandfather. Molest him, possibly, fiddle with him, steal something from him. We don't know. We, we don't know what it is. We just know that when Noah wakes up, the first thing he says is, cursed be Canaan. He knows, maybe by the word of the Lord, again, conjecture, because he's a prophet. He knows exactly what has happened, and, and the right person is cursed, and nobody questions it, and nobody argues with it. Cain, or Canaan is cursed, and that curse still holds true to this day because it's not called Canaan land like it was in the days of Moses and Abraham. It was called, it's called Israel. So that is about the best explanation I have that I've uncovered just with my brief research because it's been questioned and asked about before. He knew what his younger son had done unto him, and he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And so... I think it, the, probably the more fascinating point is this, that that curse went with Canaan everywhere he went, and he had to serve people. And surely those people became servants to the Israelites when Israel took over the land and began to overpower them and call them into their servitude and call them into the slavery after the armies would fight their battles. So um, even after this point, you're talking um, 500 years after this, 500, 600 years before Israel became a nation. And that prophecy began to come to true pass, truly to pass. Hopefully that answers it. That's the best explanation I've got. Has to do with kind of some Hebraism, some figures of speech. Um, I don't know. That's all I got for you. <laughs> I don't know everything. I've got to do research on my own. Please continue to pray for the nations of the world. Continue to curse this coronavirus. I can feel and perceive that we're shifting away from praying against sickness and disease to praying for supply provision, economies, finances, food supplies, 
Now in my nation, they're talking about a concern over meat and uh, the meat supply chain because they're having to shut down meat processing plants. Uh, one factory they just shut down yesterday or two days ago pr- produces 60, was it 60,000 meals a day, 60,000 servings a day of pork, or six, no, six million, six million servings a day of pork, I believe it was. And that thing has to be shut down indefinitely. So what's that going to do to the meat in the country? Pretty wild times we live in. Stay in the Word. Stay in faith. Please be praying. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode. That'll be, I think, number 30. Yeah, number 30's next. Call you blessed.